Good Wednesday morning. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Well, that's the problem, ain't it? Our tendency is to grow weary and to be faint-hearted and to just slack off. To get disinterested and to live from day to day without much concern whether we're running the race of faith well or not. This chapter of the book of Hebrews stresses one great fact. The Christian life was never intended to be a picnic. It's bound to be rough. It's rough because it was rough for Jesus. Consider him who endured. If you think it's hard living with neighbors you live with or working with a boss you work for or living with a drunken spouse or an abusive parent, consider him who endured. He had constantly to endure the stubborn, uncooperative attitudes of his hearers with which they refused to believe what he said. It was true even of some of his own disciples. How many times did Jesus have to rebuke them for being small in faith and even for putting stumbling blocks in the path of those who tried to come to him? Again and again, he endured the hostility of sinners against himself. That is what the Christian life will often be like, and we need to face it. Our Lord had to endure it to the very end. He was the one who reminded us that the servant is not greater than the master, and if the world persecuted him, it's gonna persecute us as well. A 19th century poet wrote, God has not promised skies always blue, flowers strewn pathways all our life through. The entire chapter of Hebrews 12 enlarges upon this fact that the Christian life will include times of hardship, times of trial, and it points out two very specific reasons why. First, Trials come to teach us the discipline of love. To these harassed, persecuted Christians, tempted as we often are with discouragement, the writer of Hebrews says, do not look at the dark side, look at the bright side. There's something good about discipline. This may sound fatalistic, but it could be worse. <laughs> you have not resisted to the point of shedding your blood. God has spared you what others have had to face and you should be grateful for that. Second, trials allow unique opportunities to share our faith. Others are looking to us and we have a responsibility to them. He points out something that will stop the grace of God in its tracks, bitterness. No matter how we want to justify, bitterness is always wrong. Resentment, envy, bitterness, they're never from God. So if you're manifesting these things, you're not only in a bad place spiritually yourself, but you're gonna give a very convoluted picture of what a Christian is. Bitterness, it's a highly contagious disease. If one person is bitter and continues in an unforgiving, bitter spirit, others are infected by this and it spreads and defiles many. I hate that you may be suffering, but your suffering well may be the very thing that brings someone else to Jesus. Heavenly Father, what a revelation this is that the security that we have when we rest in that which can never be shaken. We are so grateful today, Lord, that by grace you've led us to this place. Help us to stand strong. Help us to hang in there as we endure difficult circumstances in life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow.